Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In today's lecture, we discuss about uh, some of the variants of this finite automata. You have seen this finite automata as a language acceptor, that means a uh, language recognizer, when given a string, uh, supply that to the initial state and see whether you are reaching to a final state or a non-final state, according to that you decide that the string is accepted. So, uh, that is how this finite automata we have seen as language acceptors. So, among these language acceptors, you have uh, known the variant of DFA deterministic finite automaton, you have known the uh, you have already learned NFA non deterministic finite automaton, in which you know you have epsilon transitions and uh, for each in each transition you can have uh, if you apply any symbol in a particular state you can have several transitions. So, that way the non determinism is defined and we have observed that these two are equivalent also. And uh, now, so there are some other variants in finite automata like two way finite automata, two tape finite automata like that we have. In case of this two way finite automata, if you recollect this the uh, schematic diagram of DFA or NFA, there you have input tape divided into cells and the input symbol that you are placing say like this and you have a finite control from which a reading and a reading head is connected to this input tape and uh, there the state components that you have a pointer. So, the current state is pointed by this pointer the left justified right side infinite tape divided into cells the input you are placing on this tape and uh, uh, in the initial state if you start from the leftmost cell uh, by the time of completion of this tape. I mean that input that you have given if the current state is a final state then you say that uh, the string is accepted that is how the notion we have. In case of this two way finite automaton the situation is you look here in case of DFA or NFA this reading head is after one transition it is taking from this cell to this cell it will move automatically and, and then and another transition from this cell to this, uh, uh, to this cell this will move. And, uh, continues till you know uh, the input is exhausted that means exactly there will be n transitions for a n uh, string of length n but in case of two way finite automaton in case of two way finite automaton we allow this reading head to move left and right in each uh, transition of course either left or right in each transition so, that is what is uh, the two way mechanism that means, for example, in a particular transition you might be moving from this cell to this cell in the next transition you may move back to this cell, but of course, in each transition one left move or one right move. Of course, this is a reading head only. So, this reading head will read a symbol and looking at the current state. So, you will supply transitions to move right as well as left. So, this kind of uh, mechanism is allowed to I mean uh, in uh, two way finite automaton and in case of the variant two tape finite automaton what do you have here we have only one here we have only one uh, input tape, but in, in case of other variant you may be allowed with one more tape and of course, input will be always be given input will be given on uh, one tape only say for example, this is the first step on this you are given input. Now, another reading head will be connected to this and this will be used for some computation some rough work sort of thing like certain uh, things that you can remember by storing some information on this step second step and uh, you will be doing the computation on the input of the first step only and pursue the input and uh, accept by final state. So, this kind of uh, variant is also uh, there like allowing two tapes of course, left justified right side infinite tape 
and uh, two reading heads from the finite control will be connected one each to the tape and uh, the computation will be you know uh, processed on the input of the first tape so this kind of variant is also there in the literature the two tape uh, finite automaton but here is the point uh, that like nfa and dfa are equivalent which are accepting uh, uh, um, regular languages two way finite automata or two tape finite automata these variants also precisely accept regular languages so these results of course uh, i am not proving here in this lecture but uh, you can no make a note that these are no more powerful than the dfa that means this gives you certain facilities like nfa for a given regular language you can construct an nfa very sort of easily compared to, to dfa sometimes similarly two way finite automata may be helpful in order to uh, accept certain regular languages very quickly you can construct two way uh, finite automata relative compared to, to that of uh, uh, dfa or uh, two tape finite automata may be useful in the sense uh, that uh, that may give you facility to construct uh, finite automata very quickly this variant uh, but of course the language uh, the class of language accepted by this any of these things may not be bigger uh, is not bigger than the class of regular languages they are precisely accepting regular languages now these are the part of language uh, uh, acceptors some variants i have presented now there is another notion called finite state transducers so these are actually the uh, sort of like output devices in the language acceptors you are giving the input on the tape and you are just seeing that whether the input is accepted or rejected or so that is what we are seeing in case of language acceptors but in case of finite state transducers what is the mechanism there you give the input and expect some output so this kind of uh, mechanism the, this kind of variants are available in the literature and of course these are also philosophically equivalent to uh, uh, this uh, uh, finite automata the class of finite automata, like dfa nfa this kind of things so so in which i just mentioned these two classes like mill emissions and moore emissions so in this case like here you have one input tape of course now i call them it as input tape a finite control and a reading head to this input tape and uh, now we assume one output tape again divided into cells and one this writing head will be connected to the output tape this is input tape this is output tape this is output tape this is writing head of course this is finite control as earlier in case of dfa finite control this is writing head there is this is uh, sorry this is reading head here this is reading head and this is writing head this is writing head so in case of more and mill emissions this kind of mechanism is allowed and uh, you will be giving input on this input tape and uh, according to the transitions some output will be left on the output tape so, this kind of devices as finite uh, state transducers are available in the literature among the variants of finite automata now let me just introduce some of the variants and uh, how uh, they are accepting languages are you know how they are giving the output that i will explain through certain examples let me start with the two way finite automaton let me formally define that because whatever the way that it is working it, uh, it is supposed to work that i have already explained that in each transition you may be allowed to go to left or right other than going uh, changing the state so um, formally a two way dfa i may simply call it as two dfa there is a quintuple again q sigma delta q not f like a dfa <coughs> where this q sigma q not f are as in dfa that means state set input alphabet q not is the initial state you have the set of final states but the transition function delta in case of dfa what do you have given a state and input symbol you have an x state only one state is assigned but here given a state and an input symbol 
you can you will be assigning a state and in addition to that you can move either to left or right you are the transition there in case of dfa you will be moving only to right therefore it is not mentioned but here you are allowed to move left also that means in a transition you may the transition function is thus a function from q cross sigma to q cross set of lr where l is indicating left move r is indicating right move now to talk about the computation and uh, the language acceptance uh, all those things now again formally let me discuss about uh, the concept of configurations and computation all those things here in case of 2d fe also a configuration or instantaneous description of a 2d fe is an element of q cross sigma star cross sigma cross sigma star or it is an element of q cross sigma star because you look at in case of in case of this 2d fa like uh, this is the input given to you now at this point of time it is pointing to this current state q not and you are reading symbol a now the situation is in case of dfa you have just mentioned the current state and whatever the string that you are going to read that much only you will be mentioning uh, that means for example here the current symbol is a and after that whatever is the string that is only you are interested in whatever the string left to the current uh, uh, position of the reading head you don't require because you are not going to anyway visit that string but here you have a possibility to come back that's why you have to mention the entire tape content and where the current uh, where is the reading head uh, what is the current position of the reading head all the things need to be mentioned so that way in case of dfa if i would have written just that qx where the first symbol of x is the reading symbol current read, currently reading symbol if this is in case of dfa in case of 2 dfa i require the total information of the input tape that means if the current state is p and say for example x a y if i write so the string which is left to the current symbol that we are reading say a the left to that is x and uh, right to that is y so this is how the configuration in 2d fa we have to declare because when the transition is taking to left you have to visit what is the content of the tape left to it so in the, the, the because of this reason now you see the element is the state component you have to mention and left to that whatever is the tape content that is a string is an element of sigma star a this is an element of sigma the currently reading symbol and then whatever is the string right to that that is sigma star so there's a configuration is an element of this r we have mentioned that it is an element of q cross sigma star what is the reason for this for example you have finished reading this input and you went beyond the beyond the input that means say for example this reading head in a particular situation suppose reach to this position now it is not reading anything that means we don't have any transition defined for that because we have defined the transitions from the for the current reading symbol with the current state if you know then according to that you can talk about the what is the next state and uh, uh, to which it has to move say for example from here after reading b if you are asked to go to right that means you have gone beyond the input and thus you are not going to have any the uh, current symbol to read and uh, there is nothing uh, right to that that means the tape content that left to that will uh, will only be there that is an element of sigma star and thus the configuration has to be an element of q cross sigma star in which we are not going to have any current reading symbol or thus anything right to that so that is why formally we define configuration or instantaneous description if you take a snapshot or instantaneous description of this you have if you can give this information that is sufficient and thus formally it is an element of q cross sigma star cross sigma cross sigma star this is one option another option is q cross sigma star when the reading head is going beyond the input so i have mentioning that a configuration q x a y is an element of this indicates that as uh, just i have explained the current state of 2d fa is q the input is x a y that is the total string on the tape the reading head is in the currently scanning symbol a 
So that is what is it. For convenience, instead of writing this may, uh, in a four components, we may simply denote it as two component, uh, I mean that is as a pair, but we have to mention what is the currently reading symbol. So for convenience, we may mention the configuration as q x a y and with an underscore at a to understand that the current re currently reading symbol is, you know, the reading, at, uh, reading head is at this particular position. And uh, the sub second type of configuration that q x that means that the reading head is beyond the input as I have explained. Now, let us come to the part of computation into DFA. As earlier in case of DFA, computation is of this form where this is the relation that is one step relation between configurations. So, this is a reflexive transitive closure of this relation as earlier. Now, let me define one step relation. In, con in the context of 2 DFA, let us look at this, because this one step transition is because of the transition function delta is a current state and a current reading symbol based on that whatever is the transition given to you, that transition has to be implemented on the on that instantaneous description or that particular configuration. That is how you are getting next configuration in one step. If so, how we are defining this one step function, one step relation that is if delta of p a, if the current state is p and when you are reading the symbol a, if the transition is giving you q x, where x can be you know either l or r, then the configuration c with the current state p with the input x a y with a as a reading thing gives the configuration c dash and we are denoting it with this relation c related to c dash in one step in, in these following cases. In case x is right, what do you understand? There are again two things. One is if y is epsilon, that means there is no string right side to the current currently reading symbol, then you are changing to the state q and then the reading head is going beyond the tape, that means this is an element of q cross sigma star, that kind of configuration is coming, this is sc dash. Or in case you have some string which is non empty. Then I can always mention it as by dash because the right side string, some non empty string is there that is of the form by dash for some b in sigma. Then the currently reading symbol will be b next to that a. So, this kind of configuration will be now we see as c dash. It is in case of if x is l, then now you look at the left side, if there is nothing left to that, that means you are going beyond the tape. And, and in this situation we say the machine hangs. So, we do not have any definition if left to the current symbol if there is no string, like there is no cell to move. Otherwise, of course, there if there is some symbol that particular symbol will be the currently reading symbol in C dash. So, thus the configuration is of this form. So, this is how we define one step relation, this is how we define one step relation and then the reflexive transitive closure of that relation, one step relation we denote by star of that relation and that is how we define the computation. Now, if you give a string a 1 a 2 a n in sigma from sigma star, we say that is accepted by given uh, 2 d f a a, if you give this in the initial state, start with the initial state with the currently reading symbol is the leftmost symbol of the input. In finitely many steps, if you because the input we are not going to transform anything, but the reading head if it is going beyond the input of course, with the situation that it is to the rightmost end because the reading head is going beyond the input does not mean that you will uh, you will go towards left end and hang. Here the configuration we are defining only when the reading head is going beyond the input right side because where the cells are existing because we have right, uh, right side infinitely many cells the reading head uh, reading head has to go out uh, beyond the input towards right of the input. So, if you get this kind of configuration p a 1 a 2 a n without having the indication of that uh, reading head for some p in f then we say the string x is accepted by the given 2 d f a. Now, as earlier we can now say that the language accepted by 2 d f a a is of course, denoted by l of a is set of all those strings in sigma star that is accepted by a. Now, let us look at some examples, because how this variant of 2 d f a will be helpful in order to understand 
some regular languages. Now, I mentioned this language here, consider the language over 0 1 that contains all those strings in which every occurrence of 0 1 is preceded by a 0. Whenever you find a 0 1, then you should have a 0 before that. This is a regular language that of course, you can find a DFA for this. Okay, let me just spell out some instances of uh, this language. This is an element, this is this is a string in L, you just look at. For example, if I take this 0 1, first 0 1, I have prior to that 1 0. If I consider this 0 1, I have 1 0 before that. For this 0 1, I have 1 0 before this. In this example, for this 0 1, I have a 0 here, but for this 0 1, I do not have a 0 before this. So, this is not a string in L. So, I hope you now you understand what kind of language is under consideration. If you take any sequence of zeros and 1s, a string over 0 1, whenever you have an occurrence of 0 1, there should be a 0 before that 0 1, that is what is the criteria for this language. Now, let us try constructing a 2 DFA for this. For every occurrence of 0 1, there should be a 0 before that, that is what is the, there is a 0 before this. For every occurrence, there is a, a 0 before this. Now, let us, let me consider this as the tape and the input is given on this. And the input symbols are from 0 1, start with the state say q naught. Now, you keep looking at the symbols going to the right on this step. For example, from here I am going towards right, I scan for 0 1. So, whenever you are getting 0 1, you remember that and then go back two cells left to that go back two cells left to that and see that particular cell is having 0 or not, that is how I will be designing here. So, that means, in the initial state q naught, if I receive 1, I do not have to worry to remember or anything, I simply go to write in the same state, because state component is remembering certain things. If I have 0, I have to now wait whether I am getting 1 to come back, that is why I am changing the state, let me call it as q 1 and uh, go to write to scan the next symbol. Now, in q naught I have defined the transition for 0 and 1. Now, let me consider q 1. In q 1 the situation is, if I have 1 in q 1, now I have to move to 2 cells left. So, I will come to left now, let me call it as q 2. If in q 1 I have received 0, that means, I will continue to uh, wait for 1. So, in the same state I continue to go to right, that is how we, we define here. Now, in q 2, for example, here I have 1, 0, 1, say 0, 0 like that. Of course, this string cannot be accepted, because before this 0, 1 I have 1, but not 0. So, when I am reading this one, I continue in q naught and move to right, I read this 0. So, at this particular place I am in q naught, when I move to right, here also I am in q naught, after reading this 0, I move to q 1 and go to right, that means, I, when, while reading this one, I am in q 1. So, in q 1, when I am reading this, I move to q, q 2, but come back to this left cell, that means, I am coming to this q 2, but this cell I am reading now, the second cell. Uh, I have to check this symbol is 0 or not, that is why I have to come back in q 2 once more, that means, I have to remember you know uh, the number of cells that I have moved. So, in q 2 we are in, that means, one cell is moved, we know that is always 0 here, but I am not worried about it, I am not worried about it. So, you just move once more, that means, moving is now denoted by q 3 move to left and uh, move to left. Of course, you know that when you are in q 2, you will be receiving 0 only. 
but reading one is not a possibility we not we are not worried we just define it like this now in q3 you have to cross check now in q3 you have to cross check whether you are having in this position 0 or 1 if you have 1 you continue the transitions and keep going to right beyond the input and you do not accept it you can put a state which is not a final state for example if you have a 0 here if you have a 0 here what do you do then you keep processing this way that you continue the transitions which continues beyond this 0 1 and then from this point again you have to repeat the same mechanism you keep searching for 0 1 and come back whether you have 0 or not you cross check and so on. So, with this logic if I pursue of course, here I have defined it as uh, uh, this in q naught I am changing to when I am reading 0 q 1 when q naught in q 1 we are continuing to right and uh, changing to q 2 and to coming back to left and in q 2 I am coming further back in q 3 if I am receiving 0 that is the situation that I will continue to cross check again whether 0 1 is existing or not on the tape and whenever 0 1 is existing I will come back two cells and see whether I have 0. So, whenever it is failing that means in q 3 if I am getting 1 that means before 0 1 I do not have 0, but 1 is there that then in that situation I am putting in q 5 in q 5 you just cross check that what I am doing is whatever the symbols I am receiving whether it is 0 or 1 I am just keep uh, I am just going right that means I will go beyond the input and q 5 is not declared as a final state thus the input will not be accepted. On the other hand, on the other hand, if I have received uh, you know uh, 0 there, then I am putting it in q 4. You see, I have to pass 2 cells. So, I will be passing these 2 cells 0 like the input 0 1. So, uh, to indicate that I have these 2 states q 4, q 6, after passing 2 cells, I will be putting setting back to q naught and q naught will pursue the input uh, to cross check whether again 0 1 is existing before 0 1 whether 0 is there or not like that it is pursued. Then. So, thus you see whatever is the condition exactly given to you for every occurrence of 0 1 before that 0 is there or not that is to be cross checked. Now, we are not characterizing this language I mean uh, characteristic properties of this language you can analyze and probably you can find a DFA corresponding to this, but you see whatever the way the language is presented the property is given that if 0 1 is existing before that you have to have 1 0. So, that means you have to come back and cross check unless you have the mechanism because just as it is if you want to implement a finite automaton unless you have the mechanism to come back means that means the reading head if it, if it cannot come back you are unable to see what is the particular symbol before that. So, this particular variant will be helpful to construct a variant of finite automaton I mean uh, a finite automaton to accept this kind of language and uh, the property whatever is given as it is you cross check and construct. Let me look at some computation in this particular uh, uh, finite automaton if you take the string 1 0 0 1 1 you see before this 0 1 occurrence of this 0 1 you have a 0. Now, if you just follow that uh, um, uh, DFA I mean uh, the 2 DFA whatever is constructed and uh, implement this is the computation that you can realize and see at the end of that the finally, the reading head goes beyond the input in the state q naught and we have declared that both q naught and q 1 as final states and see that the string is accepted because of this configuration and uh, you can verify this computation because as uh, I have mentioned in q naught you are reading 1 and uh, you will be continuing to write and you will be continuing to write you see this underscore is mentioning that what is the current uh, uh, reading head position. So, after completion of this 0 1 you will be coming back you will be coming back to this 0 and since it is 0 you are going again now these two cells write that is what via q 4 and q 6 that we have indicated and in q 6 it will again it will uh, set back to q naught and it will continue to cross check whether 0 1 is existing and after this portion there is no 0 1 and once it goes beyond the input the current state is q naught and hence the string is accepted that is how the computation is presented for this uh, on this string. Now, if you take this string 1 1 0 1 you can clearly see that this is not a string in the language and if you observe the computation that is uh, as follows 
and uh, finally, you are having this as a final configuration. The reading head is going beyond the input, of course, to write, and the current state uh, of this configuration is Q5. And thus, you see that this configuration is not having final state as a state component. This is a non-final state, uh, and hence, uh, you know, uh, we say that the string is not accepted by this 2DFA. Now, let me give you one more example. You consider this language or 0 1 that contains all those strings with no consecutive zeros. Of course, for this I hope that you have constructed a DFA by now, but no consecutive zeros suppose if I say that means there should not be any two zeros in the input. So, 0 0 is not a string that means here you can cross check whenever you have 0 you just come back and cross check whether you have a 0 there. If you have 1 you are happy you continue further if you have 0 there because whenever you are getting 0 you just come back and see what is the current uh, uh, what is the symbol before that. So, here you have a, an advantage you are you have a mechanism that you can come back and cross check. So, I can state this as a property for this no consecutive zeros. So, you have a DFA now you can construct a 2 DFA using this you just whenever you are getting 0 you just come back and cross check what is the current symbol. Now, take this property into count and uh, now you try constructing a 2 DFA for this and you will understand that uh, you can get a uh, you can get a better advantage in uh, understanding this language uh, through 2 DFAs. Now, we will inter introduce another uh, variant of uh, finite automata as I have uh, concentrated on one particular uh, language acceptor. Now, I will go to finite state transducers and uh, uh, define and formal introduce those things and uh, discuss certain examples. Because here I have mentioned that there are two, two types of variants one is as a language acceptor another is a finite state transducers. So, we have touched the 2 DFA now let me introduce one finite state transducer. In that class, I am considering millimissions. As mentioned earlier, here the situation will be like this because you have an input tape, finite control, the reading head to this, a writing head to output tape, that is how it is. So, corresponding to that, we have the required, we require the uh, number of components. Here that we declare thus we declare as a six triple a millimission m state component. So, here state component that input alphabet transition map the q naught as initial state uh, this as in DFA. Now, what are the new thing that you are seeing the delta is there of course, that is again a finite set called output alphabet, but the transition function is not. I mean uh, the transition function you know they are that is as in DFA that means given a state and an input symbol you are getting an x state assigned, but another new component that you are seeing is a little lambda that is this lambda is a function from q cross sigma to delta is a function called output function. So, if that means what it is doing given a state and a symbol you are assigning an output an output symbol to this. So, millimission is formally defined like this. So, if you are reading a particular symbol on the input tape, immediately you will be changing the state through the state transition delta that uh, transition function and uh, simultaneously you are printing a particular symbol on the output tape. For example, if this is the situation and uh, what is the current state say for example, you have the input a b a a b for example, and uh, while reading a if you are asked to move from p to q. So, from the current state p it will move to q and uh, on the tape for example, corresponding to a when you are reading in b if it is assigned that you have to print 1 it will print 1 here. Then automatically this reading head goes here second place and what is the corresponding state and the symbol whatever is the assignment is given to you you will change to the state and according to that whatever you are asked to print by delta the, the output function lambda. So, you will be printing the output here and so on. So, by the time you finish this uh, finish reading this you will be printing this also simultaneously according to the 
transition and uh, uh, delta and the output function lambda given in the finite control. So, that is the behavior. Now, the situation is we have mentioned this finitely here finite sets are here involved and the transition function is uh, q cross sigma to q. Of course, you know in D F A how to extend this to naturally to all the strings. Similarly, this output function this is defined finitely here that means, state and a symbol is given an output symbol is assigned here. Now, you can extend this to input strings that means, elements of sigma star naturally that is the how that is is given here the extension of lambda to the strings can be formally defined uh, uh, can be given by this function I am calling it as lambda cap that is from q cross sigma star to delta star that is defined by as I had mentioned in this meanwhile uh, mechanism you read a symbol you change the state and simultaneously you print corresponding to that whatever is lambda is saying and uh, then you are going to the next place now I am reading b depending on the current state when you are reading b what is the state it is asked to change by delta you change that state move to right one more cell here and uh, according to the lambda whatever you are asked to print you print it here. That means, whatever is the sequence of input that you are reading here corresponding to that while finishing these 5 symbols you will be printing 5 symbols here and that is what is considered uh, is naturally to be considered here formally. If you are reading empty string on the tape you will have empty string as output. If you are reading x a a string of the form x a where a is a symbol of sigma and x is a string then whatever is the output for x you give it and uh, then in the state the in the current state after pursuing x that is what is delta cap of q comma x that you know. In this state if you apply a whatever is the symbol that is to be printed that is what is given by lamb function lambda that symbol need to be juxtaposed to the string lambda cap of this is how inductively we have defined that is what is exactly what I have explained. So, that is for the input a 1 a 2 a n in the state q the output will be the output will be that is lambda cap of q comma x will be in the state q 1 in the state q 1 you apply a 1 where q 1 is the state q because uh, that is the current state what is the symbol that you printed here. Now, you go to q 2 what is the q what is the state q 2 in q 1 if you apply a 1 you are going to q 2 that is what I am assuming. So, in q 2 if you apply a 2 what is the same output symbol you are asked to print that you will be printing in the second cell and so on in q n that means, in q n minus 1 if you apply a n minus 1 whatever is the state that you are getting I am calling it as q n and in which you apply a n and whatever is the symbol that corresponding to that is assigned by lambda d 2. So, here you understand that a 1 a 2 a n if it is the input the output sequence will be this and uh, the length of the input is same as the length of the output here. Now, the output of a milli machine is defined to be the string lambda cap q naught x where q naught is the initial state of the machine because th you have to set the machine in the initial state and give the input and whatever is the output in which that it is giving because whatever is the string you give in any state and you see what is the output that you are getting that is how we have defined lambda cap. But what is the output of a milli machine is what are the string you give it in the initial state and uh, whatever is the output uh, from initial state that you get that is what we call as output of the machine. Of course, as I have remarked earlier that the length of the input is same as length of the output. Let me give some example of this uh, variant. Let us consider q 2 be this q naught q 1 q 2 three states input alphabet I am taking a b output alphabet 0 1 and a transition function delta and the output function lambda are given by these tables. Right. Now, uh, when by definition you can clearly see I have a state set input alphabet, output alphabet, transition, output function, transition function, output function and I am declaring q naught as initial state from by definition this is clearly a milli machine. But what is the behavior of this? Okay. Be, uh, before looking at that you can first uh, draw the diagram 
I mean through digraph representation like a DFA. In the initial uh, in the initial state Q naught, if I am applying A, whatever is the output that I am assigning in this lambda table, you just look at in Q naught if I apply A, I am printing 0 as output. In Q naught if I apply A, I am going to Q 1 and printing 0 as output. So, by incorporating the output also on these transitions in this form, there is input slash output, I can give this digraph. Now, in this digraph, you see how the input is actually pursued to give the appropriate output. You look at here, if you are getting some b's, it is simply continuing in q naught and printing 0. So, as long as you are getting b's in the initial state, you are printing only zeros. Whenever you get a, you are changing the state, that means you are remembering that you have read a. Of course, you are printing 0, but whenever from this state, of course, uh, in this state if you are still getting a's, you are continuing in the same state, that means you are not worried to remember further zeros and printing 0 only. But in the state q naught, if you get b, but then in which case you are printing 1, in that case you are printing 1 and changing the state to q 2. Now, in q 2, if you are getting b, that you are resetting to q naught, you are coming back to original position. If you are getting a, yes, that I am coming back to q 1, that means essentially you see here, whenever I am getting a b, whenever I am uh, getting a b, end of that part, I am printing 1 otherwise I am printing 0, that is what is the mechanism is going on. For instance, the output m for this input string 0 0 uh, say for example, a b b b a b a, you look at that we are printing 0 0 0 1 because this is corresponding to this a b and after this a b again I have printed this 1 and if you have a that is 0. So, that means, if you look at the what is called the number of ones of the output that is exactly counting the number of a b's occurring in this uh, input. Now, likewise you can uh, think of some other examples means to count the number of uh, you know certain substrings. For example, let me give you this as an exercise when a similar one count the number of a b s. That means, what is my instruction here is if you take a string from a b star, you are asked to print, I am assuming q naught to be the initial state, this is for a 1 a 2 a n, x is a 1 a 2 a n, whenever you are having a b a, you will be printing 1 otherwise 0. So, that means, end of this for example, b a a b a b a b b for example, this is the input corresponding to this I am printing 0, this is also 0 and a b a has not come. So, this is also 0, this for this b you will be printing 0. Since I have got this here a b a, I will print 1 here. You look again this is an a b a, thus you have clearly that a b this is one a b a with a common you have another a b a. So, that way you see you have to print 0 here, but here 1 is it is not resetting here after this rather it has to remember this particular a then corresponding to this b 0 you print and for this. So, this is the output expected. Now, that means the exercise is construct a milli mission that prints 1 for every occurrence of a b a in the input otherwise 0. So, a similar example, but you have a, you know you have to take care of this common a and appropriately design that. Now, let us discuss another example that you find the concept of milli mission is sort of uh, appropriate uh, to uh, have as a usual computer. If you consider two binary numbers, let me call uh, say a 1, a 2 and so on a n, b 1, b 2, b n. Now, what I am expecting is these two binary numbers given to you x, y somehow as input, how we have to give the all those things that we have to discuss now. 
we will be asked to give the output x plus y the binary addition need to be performed. That means, now what I will do as you understand in case of Billy machines, if you give an input string say for example, w of length n you know the output that lambda cap of q naught w that is also of length n. And when I am constructing a Billy machine on the tape in a cell I, ha I can give only one symbol in a cell I can give only one symbol. Now, on the corresponding to that symbol on the output tape this is input assume is output. So, corresponding to this symbol I can print only one symbol here. Now, what kind of input to be considered and uh, the output how I ap appropriately we have to get here that we should understand. Now, when you are adding naturally in case of binary, so you will add these two things let me call it as C n and so on you will do that and you may have a carry. So, thus the string here possibly the string here possibly of length n plus 1. Now, the thing is just to balance all these things whenever you want to add two strings or I mean uh, two binary numbers first you ensure that the first position this a 1 b 1 to be zeros. So, that whatever is the carry for uh, carry that you will get in the addition that you have one bit ready to place that. And one more point is if the length of x that means, the number of uh, you know the, uh, the as a string when you are considering that particular binary number if it is less than y then you fill them with leading zeros and you consider the input this always of you can always manage that input uh, both x and y of same length. But now the question is there are two strings here how do you place as input to the millimission. What I would suggest you consider the symbols when because we give them as uh, symbols as input here what are the possibilities because when you are taking uh, uh, sequence of zeros and ones for example 1 0 1 1 and i am i want to add this with for example 1 0 0 1 0 1 what my suggestion is as mentioned you first fill these two with zeros and take one more leading zero one more leading zero here this i am calling it as x this as y say so, these two are to be added. Now, whatever that I get, I know that this many places will be sufficient. Now, whatever the length here I made up, that will be sufficient here. Now, at a given point of time, you will be adding, you know, these two, these two like that. So, thus, what I will do, these two things together, you will be accepting it as a input. That means, the input now, I will consider the sequences, either it is 1, 1, or maybe you have the possibility 0 1 or the possibility 1 0 or the possibility 0 0. These are the four possible input symbols. So, now you can take sigma to be let me call it as say for example, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4 or a b c d whatever you like to call. So, these are the input symbols you consider. Now, the situation is naturally what you are doing you are adding from this side. So, you consider the same because we are constructing a millimission by considering this way. Now, whatever the output that you are getting you can of course, reverse it and present to understand that this is what is essentially the sum of that. So, now what I would suggest you that uh, you are calling them as uh, a 1 a 2 a 3 uh, a 1 a 2 a 3 a 4 or a b c d whatever that and now you see the situation is when you are adding 1 1 here you clearly see that I get 1 here 1 is carry forward and when I am adding this thing here this this 2 I have to cross check whether I have some carry. If there is a carry then I have to include that also to identify the output for the corresponding symbol otherwise you know if there is no carry that means, if there is no carry then in which case I do not have I will continue just what are the current symbols. So, that means, first of all from this you should understand that you should have two states one is indicating that when you are given an input either 1 0 or 1 1 
or 0 1 or 0 0 depending on whether you have carry or not the output is associated to that particular symbol. That means, for example, for a 1 the output will be you know just 1 the output will be just 1 if there is no carry. Suppose, already some carry is there for a 1 what will happen because you have 1 1 you want to add and you have one more carry. So, that way what is the total sum? So, here this is otherwise it is 0 sorry if there is no carry if there is a carry you have to because this 1 plus 1 plus 1 that means, you will have one output. So, this is how we have to distinguish for example, let me consider these symbols which are coming a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4. Assume I do not have any carry that means, as it is when I am adding 1 with 1 I have to print 0 and uh, of course, there will be one carry. When I am adding this 0 with 1 that means, the output has to be 1 here there is no carry of course, in this case. When I am having a 3 as input I will be adding 1 0 that means, here 1 as output when I am adding 0 with 0 this is 0. Here the assumption is these are the outputs with the assumption that no carry while adding that particular. If there is carry that means, the carry possibility is 1. So, that is say when you have a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4 when you are getting them as input then I have to consider that into the picture because a 1 is 1 1 one carry is there here carry whenever carry is there. So, here now I will have 1 as output one carry will be there for a 2 that is 0 1 I have one carry 0 1 when you are adding that is 1, but one carry is there thus you will get 0 and here you have a carry. Similarly, when I am adding 1 0 you have one carry that means, this is 0 and you have a carry here. When I am adding 0 0 I have carry 1. So, that way when you add this 0 0 the output will be 1 this is how we give and finally, since as uh, we have assumed that the input we will always maintain one leading this pair 0 0. So, the carry if it is uh, if a carry is existing that will give you the appropriate output. Now, following this if I consider q naught as the state which is having no carry and q 1 for the state which is having carry 1. So, now of course, in the beginning with the initial state q naught no carry state. Now, as I had mentioned uh, here a 1 is 1 1 this is 0 1 1 0 0 0. So, let me once again write that say a 1 is 1 1 this is the symbol a 2 is the symbol that is 0 1. a 2 is the symbol 0 1, a 3 is 1 0 and a 4 is 0 0 this is how we have taken. Now, you see the transition for a 1 uh, when you are adding this with this you have you are getting a carry here, but the output is 0. So, in a 1 you have a carry that means, you are going to the state q 1. So, a 1 as input and output is 0 and a 2 when you are adding then you do not get any carry because when you do not have any carry that means, in q naught. So, you will have a loop here a 2 as input and output is 1. Similarly, a 3 you will have output 1 carry 0 for a 4 0 as output and no carry. Similarly, as I had listed here, when the carry is there that means, in the state I am in q 1. So, now you can declare that when I am getting 1 1 here I have already 1. So, that means, it will become carry 1 because 1 plus 1 plus 1 there that means, carry 1 and the output is also 1. So, f 1 you will have output 1 and continuing to this when you are getting a 2 here we have already carry 1. So, 1 plus 0 plus 1 which is the carry already because of the state q 1. So, this 
So, A 2 will continue here, but here the output is 0. For A 3 also similar situation, you get the carry, the output is this. When you are having A 4 as input, that is 0 0 and in Q 1 you have one carry. So, you will get the transition with 0 carry, mean there is no carry. So, you are transferring to Q naught state, that means A 4 with the output here 0 0 plus 1. So, here you get 1. So, thus you can construct a milli machine to pursue this addition. Of course, thus we are pursuing from uh, the way usually that you consider from uh, right to left that is how this is pursuing and you know in case of regular languages all these things that the reversing mechanism that you can uh, you can handle using a DFA. So, thus the binary addition including that concept binary addition you can see that you can represent via a milli machine as constructed here.